On December 18, 2001, Sid Burrell sent his shortest email. James just died. He'd been chronicling his son's battle with one of the most aggressive kids' cancers, neuroblastoma. After the failure of conventional treatments, James and his parents started the James Fund to raise money for a cure. Now, 10 years and $10 million later, they're rocking the cancer world. As you walk through the doors of the James Burrell Lab at Sick Kids Hospital, there's optimism in the air. They've made a groundbreaking discovery. The way we think about it is a little bit like bees, so that you have a whole hive of bees, but the queen bee is really the most important bee to get in the whole hive. And if you cannot attack the queen bee and kill the queen bee, you can't get rid of the beehive. So we believe we have a lot of clues to which cells are more like queen bee cells, and that we think we are identifying some drugs now that are more powerful at attacking those cells. And they've also learned that kids' cancers are very different from adult cancers. We think they're cancers of the cells that build the body. So all of your, the cells that build the body are called stem cells. They make all the other cells. And when something goes wrong in one of them, they don't make a nerve or they don't make an organ. What they do is they make a cancer. But since all the treatments come from the adult cancer world, they're not really targeted to the kids' cancers in particular. Sadly, that's because that's where the money is. In Canada, about 1,000 kids are getting cancer each year. 20,000 people are getting breast cancer, for example. They look at the market and they go, it's just not economically viable for them to make drugs for kids. It takes 10 years and billions of dollars to bring new cancer drugs to the market. Kaplan and his colleagues don't have that kind of money, and the kids don't have that kind of time. So the James Fund has taken a radical approach. Because of the connection between the lab and the hospital and because our integration in the way we are working, we've been able to move uh, treatment from the lab to a patient in within 18 months, which is quite unusual. Why that? Because all the drugs we tested at this point were drugs that were commercially available and already tested in a way in children for other indications. And it worked. Since 2001, there have been significant advance in the, the way we can maintain remission of neuroblastoma by adding what we call immunotherapy. How can we stimulate the immune system to make sure the neuroblastoma does not come back? That's one of the major advances since James passed away. Next week on Health Watch, you'll meet 12-year-old Eric Copeland, who is just one of the kids benefiting from James Burrell's legacy. He was diagnosed with neuroblastoma in 2009 and is now in remission. One of James's favorite sayings was, you can't let cancer ruin your day, and Eric sure is living by that motto. For Health Watch, I'm Pamela Van Meer.